Hello, this is Nikki in Niagara coming to you from Niagara Falls, Canada. And in the month of June, I completed a, another coloring book. So this is coloring book number three, I believe, that I have completed. And I actually did set the month of June as this book for me to finish in the month of June. I was about halfway through it and um, I'm trying to color a book every month and um, so of course they're going to be the smaller ones until I get enough pages done in the bigger ones to <laughs> start trying to finish those off but anyway so I um, I did this coloring quest by Sunlight Drawing and it is a color by number book if you're not familiar with theirs they have a lot of these quest books and the um, pictures uh, are mysteries unless you look at the uh, table of contents here and it does tell you what the picture is if you don't know when you're finished. Um, it, the uh, pages come with just a page full of circles, squares, triangles or hexagons that you follow the color code which is the same for every picture right here is their color code. I never used the color palette but it's there in case you need to use it and then the pages are set up this way so that your color palettes on this side on black paper and your picture is on here. So um, this one was a hexagon and the hexagons are my favorites to color. Hmm. I wonder if it's gonna be better if I do it that way but it will be annoying <laughs> to have to keep tucking under, so it'll so make do. So, uh, Hummingbird, and I used, I used a variety of, um, of media in here, though I will say towards the end I started pretty much using my Stettler 320s for everything. This one was a Sharpie's. This one, I don't know what it was done in, but this is what a triangle one looks like. We have another hexagon. This is one of my favorites. Oh, sorry, this is circles, not hexagons. Circles were actually the ones I had the hardest time with. <laughs> now this is just a horrible one. This was, um, I used some fluorescent in there for my yellow, and I don't know what I did here, but it looks terrible. I was using uh, some sort of water base. I don't think I was maybe in a very good mood when I did that one. <laughs> then, the next one, this one I used Bic markers, and is a sugar skull. That one is hexagons. Well, this one is triangles. Some of the triangle ones uh, are... Well, I guess um, the thing is, is that when you look at these up close, face on, they often don't look that great. But when you step back and like how you're seeing it on camera, the, the picture does jump out in a way that it doesn't to me when I'm looking at this straight on. So that wasn't one of my favorites, but now that I see what it looks like from a distance, I, I like it more. Um, this was Circles. And I have to say that I did wonder how Sun Life got away with having a Disney picture in their book, but shh, we won't tell. Uh, this one I made quite a few mistakes on. I have a really bad habit of um, well, it, it's not a habit. It's just I fall asleep when I'm doing things, and that's one, one of my problems. Um, and so I do have pictures that have scribble lines in them and stuff because I fall asleep coloring and then the pen just, woo, or there's a great big spot because I just held the pen there and it bled all over. So far I haven't totally wrecked anything, but these are for me. They're not for anybody else. So that's a pattern. Uh, this is the Statue of Liberty and this one again has some 
has some scribble marks on it, but wow, does that ever look nicer, like from far away than it does up close. This, the sky looks good like that. So as you can see, there's a combination of uh, a portrait and landscape ones. So this one took me a long time before I could figure out what this was. I don't follow any special pattern for how I do them. It just depends on how I'm feeling. So this is another circle one. So it didn't have the greatest fun doing that, but it is the uh, title page. So that, that one is in here. And then this was one of my favorite square ones because often, sometimes I find the square ones too pixelated. And again, it's a question of whether you're looking at straight on or from a distance. The further away you get away from a pixel pattern, the nicer it looks. So that's one of my favorite and I just loved doing the patterns in here because it would take a while before you figured out what the pattern was and then it was it's just like calming and relaxing to watch it all come to fruition and you don't have to pick your own colors that's already done for you now this one is horrendous and oh my goodness seeing it on camera like that for the first time I'm really seeing the picture. I can't see the picture because for some unknown strange reason I used metallic pens for this. So I've got metallic gold, metallic silver, metallic orange, metallic pink. And then well that fluorescent is also that orange is also fluorescent. So yeah, it looks horrible up close and I cannot even tell what it is but looking at that on camera wow you can really tell that it's a tiger Ooh. this is fun for me to see these on camera you can't really see it looking this way though okay so this was basically around the middle that I marked to this point uh, as to where I started even though I had a few pictures to do this month that were on that side and there were a couple done on this side this was basically the the point that shows what I the amount that I did this month so here's another one that looks better far away than up close And this one is really nice. I'm not a dog fan, and I'm actually afraid of them. But, uh, I mean, you know, no, I'm not afraid of puppies. But this turned out really nice. I like it a lot. I love the colors in it. It's so bright. And then this one of the lotus flower. I guess I can turn it. This one, <laughs> this one took me an awful long time to figure out what it was too because I didn't do <laughs> the, the boat shape down there for quite some time. And this one, I was really surprised at how nice it turned out. Even looking, at, again this is a square one, even looking at it up close it's nice. But it did take me a while to figure out what animal it was because I got I got like the top of the head part right here and then I started working down here. So yeah, at first I was thinking it was a hamster. <laughs> Definitely not a hamster. And then this one was fun, I have to say. I'm a DC fan girl. Yay, go DC! Marvel socks! Okay, shh. Sorry, but... That is something you need to know about me if you meet me in real life. <laughs> Don't diss on DC. <laughs> and then this one. It has really pretty colors. I'm kind of a bit shadowy when I do them this way. But yeah. Okay, right, so you got to have your obligatory butterfly, don't you? Then here's another pattern one, and I loved doing this. The patterned ones don't look so great when you're looking at them head on because you can't 
it's so pixelated you can't really pick out the pattern. But they look really nice from a distance. And then this one, I have to tell you what, I had no idea this was a pirate until I had gotten the brown down here because I just had the orange without the brown for the longest time and this came together. So at one point I thought it was a chicken on a nest and maybe the eggs would have been in here for the longest, longest time. And then finally the brown got added to the beard and I knew it was a beard and that was a parrot, not a chicken. <laughs> now the last one is probably the best picture in this, in this whole thing. It is done in hexagons, which are my favorite, and it's just a very detailed picture that really, really brings out what you can get from the, this format of, uh, of color by number. And these mystery ones, I kind of consider them puzzles as well as uh, coloring books. They're, they're also puzzle books since um, you don't have to let yourself know what they are. In fact, what I do with these Sun Life drawing books is um, I do flips of them and my eyes can't help landing on here maybe a couple of times. But once I, when I start to work in the book, I uh, put a paper clip here so that every time I open the book I open it up to this page and by the time I've done three or four in here I have not got a clue what it said on the front so they're all surprises to me and that's how I like to do it and so I am quite pleased with myself to have finished this one you can see that it has uh, borne the marks of use and time as I did a lot of folding back like this while I work and it's nice to have a book coloring book that will take a beating and still stay together no pages are no pages are coming loose in here at all so uh, thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoyed this flip through of a finished coloring book and perhaps it will spur you on as to buying this one. As far as um, I go, I do have one other um, quest book and it's another one like this which has um, random images in, in, in it and stuff but they do have several themed ones. So I thought I would do a theme one next and I have on order the animal quest and so that will be the next one that I will be the next quest book that I'll be working on. In the meantime, before that arrives, I will probably do a few extra pages in the Travel Mosaic Sunlight book I'm working on. They have so many I can always be working on one of their books. So, in the meantime, until next time, bye-bye!